I don't gamble, I don't fight, I don't be hanging in the bars at night. Yeah, I used to be a fighter, but now I am a wiser man. I don't drink much, I don't smoke, I don't be hardly mess around with no dough. Yeah, I used to be a problem, but now I am a careful man. Well, if you used to want to see a commotion, you should have seen the man that I used to be. I was troubled in perpetual motion, trouble with a capital T. But staying out late, having fun, the shot of every single shot in my gun. Yeah, I used to be a lover, but now I am an older man. But if you used to want to see a commotion, you should have seen the man that I used to be. I was trouble in perpetual motion, trouble with a capital T. Staying out late, having fun, the shot of every single shot in my gun. Yeah, I used to be a terror, but now I am a tired man. Yeah, I used to be a terror, but now I am a tired man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, it's really nice. Come in from Fargo, North Dakota today, which is an interesting town. We played a school last night where everybody majors in chainsaw repairs. Uh, and had a, you know, skidoo workmanship. Then get off the airport here and try to find these throughways. They put the signs after the thing, like, guess what you missed? <laughs> you know? And then you stop and ask somebody at the gas station, and they go like, well, you go, uh, you go, you can't get there from here. You know, doing that gets to be weird, but here we are. Could you help me place this call? See the number on the matchbook is old and faded. She's living in LA with my best old ex friend Ray. Guys, she said she knew well and sometimes hated. But isn't that the way? Say it goes, but let's forget all that and give me the number if you can't find it. So I can call just to tell them I'm finding the show. I'm overcome the blow, learn to take it well. I only wish my words could just convince myself that it just wasn't real. But that's not the way it feels. Operator, oh, could you help me place this call? Cause I can't read the number that you just gave me. There's something in my eyes, you know it happens every time. Think about the love that I thought would save me. Isn't that the way they say it goes? Well, let's forget all that And give me the number if you can't find it So I can call just to tell them I'm finding the show Overcome the blow, learn to take it well 
I only wish my words could just convince myself that it just wasn't real. That's not the way it feels. No, 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 no. That's not the way it feels. Operator, oh, let's forget about this call. No one there I really wanted to talk to. So thank you for your time. Ah, oh, you've been so much more than kind. You can keep the dime. Isn't it the way they say it goes? But let's forget all that. And give me the number if you can't find it So I can call just to tell them I'm fine in the show I've overcome the blow, I've learned to take it well I only wish my words could just convince myself That it just wasn't real But that's not the way it feels Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Southern Illinois, come a down home country boy. Gonna make it in the city, playing guitar in the studio. Oh, well, he hadn't been there an hour when he met a Broadway flower. She knew she took him for his money and she left him in a cheap hotel. Oh, well, it's easy for you to see that that country boy is me. And how am I gonna ever break the news to the folks back home? Well, I was gonna be a great success. Things sure ended up a mess. But in the process, I got messed up too. Hello, mama and dad, I had to call collect. Cause I ain't got a cent to my name. But I'm sleeping in a hotel doorway. And tonight they say it's gonna rain And if you'd only send me some money Well, I'll be back on the street again Say didn't care of the Sunday mission box number 10 We're back in Southern Illinois They're still worrying about their boy his boy going home soon as he gets the fare Because as soon as I got my bread I got a pipe upside my head You know they led me in an alley Took my money and my guitar too so, Hello mama and dad I had to call collect Cause I ain't got a cent to my name But I'm sleeping in a hotel doorway and tonight they say it's gonna rain And if you'd only send me some money Well, I'll be back on my feet again Send it in care of the Sunday Mission Box number 10 Thank you. Uh, this is a, a song, it's on a new album, but it's one of those things that you kick around in your head for a long time. Uh, I got out of school, I worked at a station for a while, and did a bunch of other things, and found myself in the army. Uh, I was really surprised. 
and got this brown letter all sticked and licked and signed by the general, his personal self. And he said, come on down to Fort Jackson. We can use people that have had four years of college. I went down. They gave me these tests and gave the pronouncement, infantry. Because <clears throat> grunt, all these nice things. And it was so weird getting down there the first day. You know, I had my T-shirt on, my long hair, and the guy said, maggot. He <laughs> called me a maggot. Now, I don't know uh, how you feel about that, but I felt really bad. Because, like, nobody ever said anything like that before, especially anybody that big, you know, that I couldn't say nothing back to. So I started getting in with the program and everything, and then I figured that uh, I would go to communication school because I had this radio experience. And they said, hmm, Army knows what's best for you. So they give me some more tests, and they say, what would you like to do? I said, I'd like to go home. I'm tired of this. And then they gave me some more tests. And I ended up climbing telephone poles, which to them was communications, uh, 40 feet above the ground on top of these poles. Uh, they called me a field communication crewman, and everybody else calls you target. Because uh, you're really up there, you know? It's just right there, not hiding behind anything. I'll show you how brave I am. Uh, and I fell off a couple of them, and pretending to be sick, I used to go to the, uh, the doctor in the morning. Now, army doctors, you know, are really in a world all by themselves. Uh, this one especially, the guy that, that handled our area, was a guy I used to call Dr. Red Cloud. Uh, and you'd go in in the morning and he'd shake this rattle. That would be the first thing, he'd dance around you, he had a necklace made out of buffalo teeth, you know. And, bare paw uh, and you tell him you were sick and he'd just look at you and you tell him you had a stomach ache the kind of treatment you get I walk in tell him I had a stomach ache he puts an aspirin in my belly button and puts a band-aid over it you know uh, and it was weird but those kind of experiences built up with a few other ones just kind of primed. I started thinking about this. And then out in a rifle range, one day I almost sat on a little snake, a rattlesnake. Because uh, I'm from the city, you know, like I don't know anything about those things. I mean, I've seen Walt Disney movies and stuff, but I mean, like a rattlesnake, a real live rattlesnake, and me being the one that's going to sit on it, uh, has made an impression again for the rest of my life, thinking uh, if I had sat on it, you know, where would I have tied the tourniquet? You know? I suppose I would have found out who my friends were, too. Everybody sitting around saying, you're going to die, mother. <laughs> Me being in a world. But all these things, like I don't worry about those things anymore. I wrote a song about just the attitude in general. Called, a good time man like me ain't got no business singing the blues. I was born to sing a good time song You know that nothing used to bring me down Till the day I fell in love with you and Baby, that's the day I found You had me singing the blues Singing the blues For the good time man like me Ain't got no beard, no singing the blues Go oh, on, woman, get out of here You know that I don't want to see your face Cause the things you do into this boy's mind Is such an absolute disgrace You got him singing the blues Singing the blues For the good time man like me Ain't got no beard nor singing the blues Never gonna fall in love again You know I learned my lesson well I 
Play the game of love and lost in my heart You can believe me when I tell you that I'm singing the blues Singing the blues For the good time man like me Ain't got no beard, no singing the blues You got me singing the blues Singing the blues For the good time man like me Ain't got no beard, no singing the blues Christmas lights, icy window panes, make me wish that we could be together again. And the windy winter avenues just don't seem the same, and the Christmas carols sound like blues, but the choir is not to blame. But it doesn't have to be that way What we had should never have ended And I'll be dropping by today Cause we could easily get it together tonight It's only right Crowded stores, the corner set across Tinseled afternoons And the sidewalk bands that play their songs Slightly out of tune On the windy winter avenues There walks a lonely man And if I told you who he is for the thing You'd understand But it doesn't have to be that way What we had should never have ended I'll be dropping by today Cause we could easily get it together tonight It's only right Doesn't have to be that way What we had should never have ended And I'll be dropping by today Cause we could easily get it together tonight It's only right Got up and gone Don't come knocking around my door Because I've heard your lines before There ain't gonna be a next time This time This woman's starting right now I'm gonna forget your name And your pretty face, girl and Write you off as a bad mistake You know that some women They are lovers some just got no sense But a woman like you Ought to be ashamed Of the things that you do to men And if you get to feeling all alone When you find that you can't make it on your own Don't come knocking around my door You see, I've seen your act before there ain't gonna be a next time this time This woman's starting right now I'm gonna forget your name and your pretty face, girl 
write you off as a bad mistake. You know that some women they are lovers, and some just got no sense. But a woman like you ought to be ashamed of the things that you do to men. You get the feeling you were wrong. Don't go wasting your good money in the phone. 'Cause I can hang up as fast as you can call. That ain't all. There ain't gonna be a next time. This time, this woman's starting right now. I'm gonna forget your name and your pretty face, girl. Write you off as a complete disgrace. You know that some women they are liars. Some just got no sense. But a woman like you ought to be ashamed of the things that you do to men. Yeah, a woman like you ought to be ashamed of the things that you do to men. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, in the past couple of years, I was saying I've been doing a bunch of things, and I got into this construction work uh, out of necessity. Uh, moved out of New York. Just get tired of New York. Uh, it was the only place. The subways. I call them the rolling restrooms. Uh, and there was always somebody around there with a. New York's the only place you can get mugged in a subway by somebody with a blackjack and a jar of Vaseline. Uh, they're weird. So I just decided to move out. No honor in starving to death at home. I got this job driving a 15 gear semi double clutch and E flat tractor trailer. Uh, sit up in that seat on a telephone book. Uh, Because the hood was really far out there, you know, had blocks on the pedals. But what a feeling! You know, you just get a slight feeling of how God feels, because you're like ten feet above the highway, you know, and you've got everything at your disposal—all those gears, and whistles, and sirens, plus the look that you develop. <laughs> you know, just you got your eyes honed in on something else. Uh, after a while, getting up at 4:30, I didn't like so much because I found out I was playing in bars at night. I'd be going directly to work, and, and get stuck in the morning traffic, and people start getting to you. Now in Pennsylvania, you know, you get a lot of nice little curvy roads. There's two lane numbers, so coming out of the quarries, I used to write stuff on the back of the truck, like not regular stuff like "Wash me," you know. I used to write stuff like. I may be slow, but I'm ahead of you. Uh, and then look back, you know, and just watch the look on people's faces. When you see these veins pop up in the middle of their head, you know they're starting to get a headache. Uh, that was fun, but that didn't last too long either. And you know, had to look for new ways to let out this aggravation. And I finally found it. I would go down Route 95, which runs through Delaware and all down through the South, nice and flat, and with maybe 40 or 50 tons of stone on it back. I would get that truck up to 75 miles an hour and pull up behind a Volkswagen doing 72. See, <laughs> so he said, out of nowhere, there you are. And you reach up and you grab this lanyard, which is connected to all these bright, shiny chrome horns on the top. And you go like, you'd be surprised. You look in the Volkswagen's rearview mirror, that you just can't believe that the human face can make that many expressions. You know, like the first one is usually, oh my God, because、uh, he sees that big Mack bumper with the hooks underneath.、Uh, and the second one is usually just a look of terrified resignation, as he just says, oh well. I'm going to become a hood ornament. 
And you just kind of swing out around him, and he pulls over on his side and shakes on it. Uh, really does something to your innards. Takes 26 feet of intestine and turns it into six inches of greased copper tubing. Uh, you can really get nervous behind something like that. And then the truck stops. They were always the, the places I loved to go and stop and get coffee or fill up a thermos. Uh, the truck stops are like Fellini films. Uh, you get to meet these guys that drive the long runs, like Seattle to Key West, twice a week. Uh, and that's very hard to do on a Natch. <clears throat> you know, but they have to do it. Got to get our vegetables and produce and toilet paper and Kleenex. Everything got to be here. So those are the guys that stay up. And they know they can't do it just with no does. So the truckers get into these things that they call uppers. Now, they call them uh, co-pilots, second drivers, bennies, whites, <clears throat> cartwheels, Christmas trees, you name it, and West Coast turnarounds. Now, there's a name. West Coast turnaround is a little black pill that'll make you do twice of whatever you got to do in half the time. Uh, all trucker have fat thumbs. Brat. Put that pill right between thumbnail and index finger and brat. You got tongue like a frog. See, it comes out. Can catch it no matter where it bounces in the cab. And it's such a thing because they take them with a toast of what's good for the sick is better for the well. And they're ready to go. Forty-five minutes later, they're sitting on a Jersey turnpike like this, and they go like... <laughs> Talking at 78 to the windshield, you know? <laughs> All the way across the Great Plains. Uh, and that's what the West Coast turnaround's about, because you take one in New York, drive to L.A., and turn around and drive back. All the time rapping. They cut off a broomstick about this long, and put one end of it on the throttle pedal and the other end against the seat. See, and this gives you an extra foot to dance with. <laughs> while, you're, while you're listening to WWVA trying to sell you 500 live baby chicks for two ninety nine. What a great commercial. Lee Moore, the coffee drinking night hawk, Wheeling, West Virginia. And 500 live baby chicks is a great gift. Uh, if any, you're thinking about anybody in a negative way, uh, them getting 500 chickens in a soggy bottom box is really something. If you send in early, you get a country and western tablecloth with uh, Loretta Lynn's picture on it. Uh, you get a Bible calendar, tells you what day of the week your birthday is going to fall on for the next 2,500 years. And if you're among the first 150, uh, you get an autographed picture of the Last Supper. And this is a thing called Speedball Tucker. One, two, one, two, three, four. I drive a broke down rig on May 5 ties, 40 foot of overload. A lot of people say that I'm crazy because I don't know how to take it slow. I got a broomstick on the throttle. I got a ruby to be it right down. Nine stop back to Dallas. Pop up them West Coast turnarounds. Oh, and they call me Speedball, Speedball Tucker. Taylor of the highway. And all them other truckers would tell you that the boy is mad. You be driving in a rig like that. May snow and the dirt bikes they may freeze, but they don't buy those speedball. He going any damn way he please. He got his broomstick on the throttle. You keep his throttle for the dancing round. Oh, with a cup full of cold black coffee and a pocket full of West Coast turnarounds. Oh, and they call it speedball, speedball trucker. They roll the highway and all them other truckers would tell you that the boy is mad. You be driving in a rig like that. One day I looked into my rearview mirror, coming up from behind. There was a Georgia State policeman and a hundred dollar fine. Oh, when he looked me in the eyes, he was writing me up. He said, 
driver, you've been flying. Cause 95 is the route you were on. It was not the speed limit sign. Or any they call me Speedball, Speedball Talker, clearer of the highway. And all them other talkers would tell you that the boy is man. You drive on in a rig like that, yeah, they call me Speedball, Speedball Talker, clearer of the highway. And all them other truckers would tell you that the boy is man. Driving in a rig like that <laughs> This is uh, <clears throat> uh, It's a thing that was written back in the 50s By Lieber and Stoller Who wrote all the songs for the coasters I remember the coasters. I'm originally from South Philadelphia, and the American Bandstand show drew all of its talent from uh, South Philadelphia. All the kids that would go down there with their pointy shoes. We used to call them fence climbers, because you could stick them in a cyclone fence and just do everything but walk on water with those things. Yeah, the coasters are really something used to have a lot of fun listening to them and it just carried me to such a point that after I got out of college I went to uh, work for a radio station where I was writing commercials for a big soul station in Philadelphia and I was always inspired by the coaster's attitude toward things somehow it leaked into my commercial writing and the last commercial I wrote before they told me oh uh, was during the summer of love when for some weird reason, they decided to put on a half an hour of Indian music every night on the Soul Station, and Ravi Shankar be playing. And uh, I wrote a commercial and just slipped it into the logbook where the jock opened it up and read it. And I said, "This portion of the program is brought to you by the little dudes down at Air India, the people that know how to get there, because there's where they from." <laughs> and it's a thing called framed. <laughs> I was walking down the street, kind of minding my own affairs. When a policeman come up to me, kind of unawares. He says, your name Jim? I said, why, sure. He says, what you know, buddy? You the man that we've been looking for. I said, no, I ain't. I'm being framed. Well, don't you know that I'm being framed? My comment is, I never be doing nothing wrong. But I always get the blame. I get framed. We took me down the line up, let the bright lights shine. There were nine other poor souls with me standing up there in that line. But I had the feeling I was a victim to somebody's evil plan. Cause this woman come up to me, she says, that skinny when he's a man. I said, no, I ain't. I'm being framed. Well, don't you know that I'm being framed? I call me this. I never be doing nothing wrong. But I always get the blame. I get framed. Well, then the prosecuting attorney started prosecuting on me. Jumping up down and pointing his finger, giving me the third degree. He said, where were you on the evening of October 29? I said, I was down at Tootsies. He says, Judge, that man's lying. I said, no, I ain't. I'm being framed. Well, don't you know that I'm being framed? I call me this. I never be doing nothing wrong. But I always get the blame. I get framed. Well, I deny the charges of carrying that big old 44. And I even deny the charges for robbing that liquor store. And I deny the charges of being drunk and disorderly too. But when the judge said, stand up, son, well, I staggered to my feet. And I stumbled. And I fell. And my gun went off and blew a hole in the bottom of my boot. And I said, judge. Judge. Hey, judge. I'm being framed Well, don't you know that I'm being framed I call me this I never be doing nothing wrong But I always get the blame I get framed I call me this I never be doing nothing wrong But I always get the blame I get framed Thank you 
This is a tender, touching barroom love song that took me about five years to write uh, because I couldn't find the right words. Uh, I was playing in a bar one Saturday afternoon and I noticed this beautiful little lady about that high, kind of chubby. Uh, and my rule of thumb is, you know, at 350 pounds, you're a person. At 400, you become a place. Uh, <laughs> Well, she was hanging in there. And I noticed right after I'd gotten finished singing Ogie from Muskogee, uh, she was clapping real hard, and this part under her arm was shaking back and forth. And I got excited. So I went over and talked to her, and even with her sitting on a stool with that bleach blonde hair, piled up that high, four or five work cans of spray net on it, so you could tap on it, it would make sounds. Uh, great lady, it looked like one of those hats that you see a, a drum majorette wear, or the Pope. You know, now the Pope has a hat, he's got that ultimate hat, but she had a hairdo that looked like that. The only thing she was missing was the great big uh, message ring that you can send things in code. Pope to Cardinal, Pope to Cardinal. Uh, but I wanted to really write, <laughs> write a song about this lady <clears throat> because I fell in love. <clears throat> and I started talking to her and I asked her if I could buy her something to drink and she said, sure. Uh, and I bought her a shot and a beer. That's, back home we call them boiler makers. It's just a straight shot of whiskey and a glass of beer. Uh, the little one builds a fire and the big one puts it out. And it's, they're just such a great drink if you like to fall down. <laughs> uh, really nice. But I found out that she used to be in a roller derby and she came from Texas. So I said, man, well, this is it. I've got to write a song about this lady. And then her husband came in. Uh, he was a state trooper just gotten off duty, comes in in his straight together nice gray uniform with his gray Smokey the Bear hat, <laughs> takes it off, and the first thing I see that just kind of makes me bristle is that haircut that looks like a drill instructor, felt tip pen, <laughs> tennis ball, egg with teeth, anything you want to call it, he had one of them. And then I looked in his eyes as the, you know, the introduction was made, and I saw the back of his head. Uh, it wasn't too, too much inside. I'm sure if they gave him an IQ test, he'd come up somewhere between a beet and a cabbage. Uh, <laughs> but that's par for the course. And not wanting to offend the man, you know, and then have him filing the report while I fired three warning shots into his head, uh, <clears throat> I said to myself, Sal, better be go easy with this and I couldn't find the words you know and then I start doubting myself I said four years of college creative writing English literature philosophy psychology theology I get out and I'm totally prepared for life in the 12th century uh, <clears throat> it's true <laughs> so there I was uh, really afraid to write this song. So I sought out some consolation in the biggest bottle of NyQuil I could find. Uh, it kind of laid me back a little bit. And then I went and bought two bottles of Ripple. They went to the beach. Now Ripple is the only wine made in America that's never seen a grape. Uh, it's, you know, it's not exactly bottom drawer. The only thing under it on the shelf is Sterno. Sterno, a loaf of bread to pour it through, and some funky pineapple juice. And I drank two quarts of that, and like 27 million years of evolution just went, and I was right down on my knuckles, like pointing and grinning, you know, all the things that the early primates did. Lost control of my thumb. Uh, I really believed in Darwin that day. But I wrote two verses in this uh, unconscious and semi-lucid state. Uh, 
I felt really good about it. And then, like I write with a cassette machine, see, so I had this cassette, and I said, Jesus, now what the hell am I going to do? I can't finish it, because we started traveling around a lot, and we finished a concert one night in San Francisco. This was like June, early one night, and went back to our hotel and ordered up some apple pie, coffee, and sat down to play, because I felt the song going to work its way out. Uh, well, you remember that Bon Vivant soup scandal last year where everybody was eating the Bon Vivant vichyssoise and dying because it had some poison in it, those little botulisms? Uh, well, the scandal was so bad they went out of business and moved to San Francisco and started making the pie that we ate uh, with the Lucretia Borgia sauce on it, you know. So like a half an hour after we eat it, uh, Maury and I look at each other and in stereo say, I, I think, think I'm, I'm going to get sick. Yeah. And we run like two crazy people into the bathroom to lay our nausea riff on the tile. <laughs> I get into the classic arms locked position, arms around the bowl, knees on, on the mat, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, that, that's the great equalizer. That experience is something that everybody has. There's no generation gap. There's no difference in time. Uh, it's like just, you know, everybody pees in the pool, too. Uh, well, sure enough. And Maury, of course, had eaten more of the pie, having a stronger stomach. Uh, so he got the sink in the bathtub. And we're getting calls all night long from the front desk saying, Excuse me, sir, you're not allowed to have seals in the room. <laughs> I said, That's no seals, that is us. <laughs> Just tossing, doing a ridiculous vomiting thing. Uh, and we're laughing, too, you know, because, I mean, <laughs> you don't vomit at the same time. And there's nothing funnier than watching somebody throw up. You know, because everybody does it different. Uh, he does it wrong. Yeah. Man, so I'd like to rip the toilet off the floor by the time the morning came. And it was really weird because, you know, we don't usually stay in places where there are any girls. You think they'd put us in a hotel near an airport where there's stewardesses checking in. No. They put us at, a, at the geriatric towers where... Uh, there's a convention of 80-year-old women with blue hair walking around with ear trumpets. Uh, but the next morning, you know, thinking that we're both going to die, we said some nasty things to the room service people, and then uh, I finished a song, which I thought would be a legacy. And I don't do it around Philadelphia, because I know I could be easily killed by this, uh, this person's uh, husband. It's just called, I Fell in Love with the Roller Derby Queen. Gonna tell you a story that you won't believe. But I fell in love last Friday evening with the girl I saw on the barroom TV screen. Well, I was just getting ready to get my hair when she caught my eye. To put it back and order myself a couple of more shots and beers. The night that I fell in love with a roller derby queen, round and round, oh round and round, the meanest uncle woman that anybody ever seen. Down in the arena, she was five foot six, the two fifteen. A bleached blonde bomber with a streak of me. She knew how to knuckle and she knew how to scuffle and fight. And a roller derby program said that she was built like a refrigerator with a head. The fans called her Tuffy, but all the buddies called her Spike. The night that I fell in love with a roller derby queen. Is on the wall that anybody ever seen down in the arena. Well, I could not help it but fall in love with this heavy duty. 
dirty woman I've been speaking of Things were kind of bad until the day she skated into my life Well, she might be nasty, she might be fat But I never met a person who could tell her that She's my bleach blonde mama, my heavy-handed hack-a-sack mama The night that I fell in love with a roller derby queen Round and round, oh, round and round The meanest uncle woman that anybody ever seen Down in the arena
And you've been talking in silence Well, if I silence you adore Well, every one less set of footsteps on your floor in the morning Well, every one less set of footsteps on your floor One less voice of talking And one less pair of jeans upon your door One less man to walk in But tomorrow's a dream away And today has turned to dust Your silver tongue has turned to clay And your golden rule to rust If that's the way that you want it Well, that's the way I want it more Cause every one less set of footsteps on your floor in the morning Well, every one less set of footsteps on your floor or One less voice of talking and one less pair of jeans upon your door for one less man to walk in but tomorrow's a dream away and today has turned to dust your silver tongue has turned to clay and your golden rule to rust if that's the way that you want it well that's the way I want it more cause every one less set of footsteps on your floor in the morning Every one less set of footsteps on your floor in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. This is one of my favorite songs. I started gathering these things. Uh, they're a collection of old British body ballads that I learned. I was on one of those State Department tours through the Middle East and North Africa and down into West Africa, just picking up diseases. Uh, it was great. They had to ship me home in a 50-gallon drum with a box of adult-sized pampers and a cork. You can really get some great things from the water down in those places. Called Montezuma's Revenge. And, uh, stuff really can get you moving. Never realized I ran so fast. But this one was, it's a couple hundred years old, and according to the Library of Congress, like, see, I set this up as a cultural experience, because that's where it is. Otherwise, mm -hmm, it's Carlin in Milwaukee. <laughs> you know, one of those. It's, a, it's just a good tune, though. It was uh, written, like I said, by Robert Burns, back in the days when everybody gathered together for warmth in the castles. They pulled up the drawbridge and sit around and look at the knights and all that stuff. You ever notice that those uh, suits of armor always have rust stains down the inside of the leg? Uh, uh, just an observation. That's probably how we got the seams on the inside, you know? Why couldn't they be put there? You know? No. But the, uh, they had the old suits of armor. Uh, and, you know, uh, what happened? was that at this party they had, everybody in the town got together, they pulled up the drawbridge so nobody would get in any kind of trouble. And the girls in those days are wearing those long skirts with Ken underwear. Ken underwear. You have to catch that. It's a cultural thing. It's Old English or Scott for no underwear. Uh, so the guys got these rose hips which are a very good natural source of vitamin C, uh, but also in their natural state, they got a lot of fuzz on them. Uh, they threw these seeds on the ground, and as the fiddler was playing, the girls were dancing, and they kicked the seeds up under the dress and started to itch. Now, the next thing that happens is somebody got an aphrodisiac, a love potion, and put it into the punch. So about 45 minutes later, everybody's looking at each other with these lean and hungry eyes. You know, uh, who's going to be the recipient of my long-anticipated glee? And they start touching one another and loving one another. And somebody uh, put a divot, they put the oil lamp out, 
And as legend has it, what happened then was an orgy of such great magnitude that 40 acres of corn were fucked completely flat. And this is the ball of Kerry Muir, this great famous old song. Four and twenty virgins come down from Inverness And when the ball was over there were four and twenty less Singing a waltz to your partner, your ass against the wall If you never one had on a Saturday night, you never one had at all Isn't it cultured? There was doing in the parlor, there was doing on the stones But you couldn't hear the music for the wheezing and the groans Singing a song to your partner, your ass against the wall If you never one had on a Saturday night, you never one had at all Aren't the images great? Oh, the undertaker, he was there, all wrapped up in the shroud, swinging from the chandelier and peeing on the crowd. Singing a balls to your partner, your ass against the wall. If you never been had on a Saturday night, you never been had at all. I'm doing editorial revision like a crazy man up here, Trent. The village cripple, he was there, but he could not do much. So he lined the ladies against the wall and he did them with his crutch. Singing a balls to your partner, your ass against the wall. If you never been out on a Saturday night, you never been out at all. Miss Mary McPherson was standing way up front. Some posies in their hands and a carrot. Singing a voice to your partner, your ass against the wall. And if you never been out on a Saturday night, you never been out at all. It's amazing how everybody's got a bit of the poet in them, you know. And these verses have all been passed down by oral tradition. So I'm working on a new verse having to do with a cordless vibrator. A device of our times. And we were in Amsterdam not long ago and got a chance to see the new 73 models uh, that hold four batteries. Uh, they look like a nightstick. Uh, but they have three speeds. Like a blender, you know. Slow, medium, and oh my god! The village postman, he was there, but the poor man had the pox. He could not do the lassies, so he did the letter box. Singing a balls to your partner, your ass against the wall. If you never been had on a Saturday night, you never been had at all. Now this verse has so much symbolism and imagery in it, I think it's almost cosmic. Uh, it sticks with you the rest of your life. It's almost like meeting the Maharishi for the first time. The little man, you know, the man with the Learjet. Give me three hundred dollars, I will take away your mind. <laughs> Here it comes, a mystical verse. Those of you that go on and uh, pursue careers in art and illustration are always going to think about this and try to draw it. The village magician, he was there, he gave us all a laugh. He pulled his foreskin over his head and he vanished up his ass. Singing a voice to your partner, your ass against the wall. If you never been out on a Saturday night, you never been out at all. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uptown got its hustlers, the Bowery got its bombs. Forty Second Street got Big Jim Walker, he fool shooting son of a gun. Yeah, he's big and dumb as a man can come, but stronger than a country hawks. And when the bad folks all get together at night, you do the all call Big Jim Falls, just big call. Did he say you don't tug on Superman's cape? You don't speed into the wind. 
get off the boat The mask of an old Lone Ranger And you don't mess around with Jim But do do da da dee 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 Well out of South Alabama come a country boy He said I'm looking for a man named Jim I am a fool shooting boy My name is Willie McCoy But down the home they call me Scamp Yeah I'm looking for the king of 42nd Street He drive on a drop top Cadillac As we get took all my money and it may sound funny But I come to get my money back And everybody say, Jack, Ooh, don't you know That you don't tug on Superman's cape You don't speed into the wind Get off the boat, the mask of an old Lone Ranger And you don't mess around with Jim But don't do the dive deep, 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 deep Well, a hush fell over the pool room Jimmy come by by the unlawful street And when the cutting was done, the only part that wasn't bloody were the soles of the big man's feet. Woo! Yeah, he was cut about a hundred places, and he was shot in a couple more. And you better believe a song a different kind of story when the big Jim hit that floor. Oh, oh, oh. Now they say you don't tug on Superman's cape, you don't spit into the wind, you don't poke the mask off an old Lone Ranger, and you don't. Yeah, Big Jim got his hat. Find out where's that, not hustling people strange to you. Even if you do got a two piece custom made full cues. Yeah, you don't tug on Superman's cape. You don't speed into the wham. Get on for the mask off an old Lone Ranger and you don't mess around with Slim. Thank you very much.